Good morning caffeine fiends and welcome to another coffee bean review for www.getbeaned.com. I'm the mean bean machine and today we are looking at the Cuban Serrano beans from Palant of Arundel. Now Palant is a lovely, it's a tiny little deli or it's you know quite a large deli but it's an independent little deli in the tiny West Sussex town of Arundel. Um, those of you that know a bit about British history and whatnot might <clears throat> be well acquainted with the uh, fairly famous castle and whatnot down there. But it's down in West Sussex, gorgeous little place. Um, and uh, on their wall, on their back wall, they have a selection of uh, coffees that you can buy by the kilogram. So it's about £22 per kilogram. I'm not recommending you buy a kilogram of coffee but they do it at, at 22 pounds a kilogram. So this is, uh, you know, 0 0.284. So it's about 284 um, grams. Uh, uh, I was aiming for 250 because I tend to buy in 250 or 500, but that's 625 for that. Yep. So a um, bit pricey, but not bad, you know, not bad. Um, you're buying from Independent, they're good beans, um, and they've got a range, so they've got Costa Rican and they've got a lot of African uh, beans as well. Um, I've gone for the Cuban Serrano here. Um, typically I'd drink this black, probably. I will try it with some oat milk, um, um, and we'll see how it goes. Now, Cuban coffee isn't renowned for being the uh, best in the world. But it's something I feel is kind of undersold a little bit. Um, I really like Cuban coffee. Uh, it tends to have a kind of a little bit of a bitterness about it. Um, and I, I, you know, other South American and Central American countries have kind of cornered the market where Cuba has failed to capitalise on their coffee industry, but they're, they're kind of coming back into it. You'll find more and more Cuban blends on the market now. Um, but it's not a big country, it hasn't quite got the ideal growing conditions all over the country. It's got some d decent areas. Um, but so yeah, we're gonna give this one a go. So let's see how that's come out. So in terms of blackness, there you go. Not a solid crammer, but oh, oh! So you can smell the acidity off that. That's oh, it's it's really strong straight off the bat, which is sort of what I'd expect from a Cuban um, coffee bean. Kind of really strong, quite acidic. Something to you know, put your teeth on edge. That being said, drinking it straight, not as strong as how it would smell. It's, there's a certain darkness to it, kind of very, kind of, I don't know if I'd say very acidic tones, but there's something to it. Um, very dark, not so rich, um, more, you know, uh, typically I'd, I'd expect kind of darker, richer tones, and they're not, that's quite acidic, quite, quite light on the tongue actually. It doesn't hit you at the back of the throat as much as I'd expect. Um, there is, you know, a very kind of, so there's a sense of being highly caffeinated. There's a real kind of sense of um, that strong coffee. Um, I don't know, you kind of, you know, there's a sense of that back in the day where you'd get kind of real kind of rocket fuel stuff, really kind of thick, dark coffee. That's what it smells like. And it's got that taste, but it doesn't kind of coat your tongue like it, like a bad kind of black coffee would. But it's, it's, there's something to it that makes it feel like a real coffee, you know, a kind of real traditional coffee. Mm. Now, with uh, the milk, it's kind of, uh, well, that's oat milk. It's diluted down a bit. 
and it, it comes through a bit more with that variation of sweeter tones. Again, I still wouldn't say it's a sweet coffee. It's a very... It's not a bitter coffee either. There's something to it. I mean, all coffee has a level of bitterness to it, and that comes through a lot more here. Um, but it's it's not burnt, obviously. It's done well, so it's it's really... Hard to pinpoint the exact kind of taste notes of that. I guess the point I'm getting at is that it's it's got kind of a level of fruitiness to it, but it's got a full-bodied flavour and kind of a, a flatness to it. So you get that really kind of nice enlivening sense that a coffee, you know, uh, gives you. But you don't get, you don't kind of go, oh, that's fruity or, you know. You go, oh, that's a nice full-bodied coffee. Um, and that's really what you want from a coffee, or what a lot of people want. I think a lot of people are cynical about tasting notes these days because they go, I can't taste fruit, I can't taste chocolate or honey or whatever. Um, and I think a lot of people, you know, who are cynical about those tasting notes will approach this coffee and go, yeah, that tastes like coffee. That's a nice coffee-flavoured coffee, you know? And I think... Really, that's what you want. It's a it's a mild kind of Serrano, Cuban Serrano. So, I mean, most of those, or well, pretty much all of them, are grown kind of in the same region, the Sierra Maestra. Um, so, wherever you pick up your Cuban Serrano, it's going to taste pretty much similar, um, you know, providing you get the full-on Arabica ones. Um, and, you know, due to other reasons you're not going to get a wide range of Cuban brands you get Cuban um, because they don't really deal with brands out there <laughs> but it's 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 a good it's a nice coffee uh, personally it's it's I'd call it kind of a nice breakfast coffee it's nice to start the day with um, but it's mild enough that you know I could drink that comfortably all day so <coughs> quite really quite a nice drink um, quite a nice coffee and I would kind of thoroughly recommend for those, you know, possibly more cynical about tasting notes and just want a coffee flavoured coffee. Um, that is kind of really nice. Uh, like I say, you you, you put, mix it with milk and it, and it becomes a more mild kind of all day thing. But if you want something with a bit more kick um, and a kind of a strong black coffee to start the day, um, you know, that's not a bad place to start.